What is up guys, Jared Campisi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a walk around and review of the 2019 Chevy Corvette Stingray. And I'm super, super excited, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. All right, so uh, Christine and I have been renting these cars to a company called Enterprise Exotics. So it's actually an exotics division of Enterprise and they have badass cars like this, the R8, pretty much all the cars you've seen on our channels. That's the way we've been able to rent them. And the reason we've been using Enterprise is because Toro didn't have any cars available in Santa Barbara. Uh, you had to go to LA to get them. And then you actually had mileage restrictions on cars like this. So we couldn't even bring it back to Santa Barbara to film. So we weren't able to hang out with our friends and have Alex and my mom and do all the, kind of the cool stuff that we've been doing. So that's why we've been using Enterprise. And I highly, highly recommend it because they can ship cars right to where you are. So if you're in a weird small town like we are in Santa Barbara, really cool way to get cool access to exotic cars. So definitely check them out if you're interested. We'll always put the link to them in the description below. Again, so this is a 2019 Chevy Stingray uh, Corvette, and it's a base model. Uh, again, Teens and I have been looking at possibly getting into some car stuff, mainly for her channel, but I've been having fun giving my opinions on the cars as well. And honestly, I've never really been a big fan of Corvettes, um, just because you see them so often, it's an American car. Um, they're not really super exotic, but I gotta tell you guys, after having this car all weekend, Teens and I love it. Like, it's incredible. So I'll start with the styling of the car. Um, as you see, this is a C7 Corvette, so it's the seventh iteration of the styling of a Corvette. And they absolutely crushed it with the styling. Don't you like how it looks, Teens? I love it. It's ridiculous. Like, And apparently I was reading up on some reviews of the styling and they were trying to make this car, car to compete with Lamborghinis, Ferraris, McLaren styling wise. And I actually think they did a really good job. It looks like something Batman would drive. It's really <laughs> badass. The headlights look freaking awesome. It's long, it's low, it's mean. And again, this is only the base model Corvette. It's pretty freaking cool, man. So one of the coolest things about the Corvette is um, even though this is the convertible model, I wouldn't recommend buying a convertible because all Corvettes, this part of the uh, of the roof always removes and comes off. So you literally just like click a few things, you can pull the whole roof off. So this part would be still be here. And the reason that's cool is because normally it's a big ass hatchback and you have a ton of storage space back here. And that's something that Christine and I were interested in because we do weekend trips. We want to be able to put suitcases or luggage or whatever, at least two bags in the back. And this, in the normal coupe version of the car, you could store tons of stuff in there. And this one, not so much, unfortunately, but pretty cool. Styling wise, let's come around to the back. Look at how badass that looks, guys. It's so aggressive and the exhaust, the four point exhaust sounds absolutely ridiculous. So this is a front engine, mid uh, rear drive car, rear wheel drive car. Um, and this version of the car is a V8 that is not supercharged, it's naturally aspirated. I think it's like a 6.2 liter or something like that. Making around 460 horsepower. But again, this is a base model. You're still getting zero to 60 at like 3.7 seconds in a base model. This car costs $55,000 base. That's ridiculous. And when you step up to the Z06, you're getting 650 horsepower, which is probably what teens would get, even though she doesn't need that at all, but <laughs> why the hell not? Oh, this is actually something that's pretty cool too. Check this out. So with a lot of cars, there's always like gimmicky things you have to do to access the gas. This one, you just press it, it comes right out. There's not even a cap on here that you have to unscrew. It's just, you just plug the freaking gas thing right in there. And I think literally every car should have this. It should be that easy to get gas in your car. Like, I don't know why every car doesn't have that. Another thing that's cool about this car is the way you open the door. As you can see, there's no door handles, which is really cool. You actually just put your fingers in here and there's a little touch thing in there. You just touch it like that and it electronically opens. See that little touch pad right there? And what that does is it keeps the door really, really clean. Christine and I, when we were looking at the Ferraris, they have some weird ass, it almost looks, looks like, a, like Lego piece. a Lego piece <laughs> that they put on here. Really freaking stupid. Poorly designed. Normal handles are just stupid. If it's gonna be an exotic car or a sports car, it should feel like a sports car in my opinion. So another thing that's cool about this car is you have two different settings for the seat positionings, one and two, as you can see. So we, I have one for me right now and one for teens. And what's really cool about it is whenever you press the button, it actually moves your seat, obviously, but it also moves all of your mirrors. So you can have each mirror adjusted. What? As well as the steering wheel. Yeah, as well. Yeah, so it also moves the steering wheel and the mirrors and the seat, which is really cool. This you kind of have to adjust on your own, but that only takes a second, so that's not really a big deal. So if you have more than one person driving the car, a very cool feature, and it's actually really impressive. And once again, I think every car should have that, don't you think, team? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, super cool. Um, then the seats themselves. One of the most comfortable seats I've been in, don't you think, teens? 
absolutely so ridiculously comfortable mm -hmm. and with the sports cars especially with the r8 and surprisingly with the jaguar um i'm only 510 so i'm not that big i mean I, i'm like 180 pounds and, I'm, and i lift weights so a lot of the times the seats i don't really necessarily fit in um but i also have had issues with leg room like the r8 i couldn't sit in the passenger seat <laughs> literally my knees were just up against the thing it was like this i can only imagine if i got in an accident my legs Ooh. would just be chopped the frick off ouch teens doesn't have that problem because she's five four fun size little <laughs> but you know with me i do so one of my next favorite things about this car is the dash layout first of all you see how it just turns on it shows the corvette logo it says corvette on the dash actually i guess we'll might as well show them the exhaust since i'm going to turn it on <laughs> listen to this guys it's not a cold start since we've already been messing with the car today. Listen how this Absolutely ridiculous exhaust sound. The V8 that they use, that Chevy designed for this car, sounds immaculate the pops and the cracks oh man it sounds so good um but so you know styling check exhaust sound check the next thing that's awesome is the driving experience the whole cockpit is oriented towards the driver and look at these screens this is like a seven inch touchscreen dash which is incredible it's got so many different options obviously it has navigation and and bluetooth connectivity and it's got weather and it's all just touchscreen and it works super super well and if you don't want to use touchscreens you can just use the buttons down here which is super cool but my favorite part about it is this dash right here so Another thing that every car should have, especially supercars and, and sports cars, an easy way to access different driving modes. So on the Corvette, all you have is a mode selector right here. As you can see, I'm in touring mode right now. If I move it to the left, you can see eco mode. And if I move it to the left again, you can see weather, which again, weather obviously going to make it a little bit less crazy if you're in you know rain or in climate weather eco mode for when you're trying to maybe just save on gas i think it actually puts it in a v4 mode instead of v8 and then touring you've got touring look at how beautiful the dash is and how nice everything looks and then check this out when you go into sport mode it changes the entire dash layout so that's really cool and then actually you can go over here and you can put whatever you want anywhere on the dash so i like to have the mile per hour in there which is really cool you can see in tour or in sport mode the the gas the whole uh dash will actually change colors when you get up to about halfway it'll start turning yellow and then you get close to the red line it'll turn red so you know when to shift and then if you go to track mode it also changes the whole dash check this out so look at that dash right there in track mode it looks absolutely insane and guys here's one of my next favorite parts and christina's as well see that out there there's a freaking heads up display that portrays that it literally portrays out onto the street. And that also changes, I'm sorry, with having issues, there you go. Focusing on it with the driver mode. So um, you can also move it around. Look at that, move it up or down, whatever you want. You can change the info that it shows on there. Look at that. And it's absolutely insane. And actually one of my other really cool features in this car is if I go back to touring mode, I'm not on a street right now, so it's not gonna show me, but it normally shows you the mile per hour, show you the speed limit, and obviously the mile per hour you're going. It'll show it out there on the dash, and it'll also show it in here on the normal dash. Really, really cool. And then check out all these features that you can go into. So if you go into performance stats, you can literally just cycle through performance. You got G-force meter, you got uh, your acceleration. So I think that has to do with launch mode. If you do like a launch from zero to 60, it'll tell you how fast it took. It has like coolant temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, battery voltage. It shows you um, how much horsepower you're using at any given moment. Like it's just out of control, your tire pressures, and it just goes on and on and on. It even shows you like the revolution of your engine. Actually, another thing over here is you can show, um, there's like a valet mode you can put your car in and it'll actually record the entire thing. It's a data logger. It's also for the track as well. I don't know where it is right now if I go home. There it is, it's PDR, Performance Data Recorder, I think is what it is. So if you press on that, there's actually all different types of things you can do and you can define a finish line if you're on a track, you can record to show your whole um, track performance if you wanna watch it back. There's cameras in the front and the rear of the car. It's just, my point is with showing you guys all of this stuff. Uh, Chevys and especially Corvettes in general were thought of to be pretty 
awesome performance cars and they were bargain cars, but you were, had to sacrifice usually for the interior and the and the options that you had. But it's really not the case anymore. The interior feels, feels super premium. It's leather everywhere. The seats are heated and cooled. You, see, you have two digital dashes plus a heads-up display. You have insane features that you don't even get on literally supercars. And this thing costs fifty-five thousand dollars. And not to mention, it's an absolute blast to drive. So, like I said, I've never been a huge fan of American muscle cars, but teens and I have been absolutely blown away by this thing. It's so fun and so cool and just done so freaking well. Other cars need to start to take notice. Also, one other thing, check this out, guys. You have a little screen button here and you got a little secret compartment back there and it's actually pretty roomy you can put a whole phone in here and use there's a charger too so you can set your phone in there charge camera, it camera gopro yes we put our camera and our gopro in there and all that kind of stuff you've got cup holders that work in doug demuro's video he said that this cup holder was stupid but he actually didn't have it clicked down into the part that it goes to and then as you can see it doesn't fly around at all and then if you want you can actually pull it out if you have something bigger or if you want to store a phone in there or hide something so doug Get your shit together. <laughs> uh, you do have another compartment here, which is kind of a bummer the way that it opens because the passenger can't really use it, but you can really only put a phone or two in there. Again, if this was the regular coupe model, you'd have access right to your thing. It's kind of like a hatchback, so you have access to all your stuff that you had stored behind you. And again, you've got plenty of room for the passenger. They each have their own, uh, it, I could go on and on and on, but it's absolutely ridiculous. Oh, one other cool thing. So to get out of the car, you actually just press this button, check it out and then it mechanically opens the door for you. Pretty freaking cool. Um, I don't know, it's just, uh, it's just Little a things. It's just a badass ride. So next thing we're gonna do is take it out for the, sh take it out for a ride and I'll let you guys know what I think about how it rides. Okay, so what's it like to drive a 2019 Corvette Stingray? Well, pretty damn impressive. Um, I will say, first I'll tell you all the things that I like about it. Uh, I like the ridiculous power that it has. The sound that comes out of that motor is insane. And here's the thing that surprised me the most about this car. I knew it would have awesome power. I knew it would have fun factor. I knew it would be a fun car to drive. It handles really, really well. And I can't, as a rear wheel drive front engine car, it can get a little squirrely and this does too. When you're even, but when I'm going around turns, for some reason, it handles incredibly well. It stays really flat through the curves and it feels safe, right teens? Didn't you feel pretty safe when you were driving it? Yes. Like it feels like you can drive it pretty hard and it's not gonna fly out on you or slide out on you or if it does, it's pretty predictable. A lot predictable. safer than when we drove the Porsche. Yeah. It, <laughs> I it, didn't like that car It feels way faster than the Porsche, way more plush, way way safer. And actually when they did the head-to-head -head on the head-to-head -head YouTube channel, they did a, a Corvette, Grand Sport Corvette versus a Porsche 911. And the Porsche 911 beat it in a straight line. The Corvette was manual. Um, but then the Corvette beat it on the um, track and it also beat it on the um, obstacle course, which is pretty insane because Porsches are known for their handling and the Corvette destroyed it in everything. So, and actually the Z06 Corvette, which is the big brother of this one, has like one of the fastest Nürburgring times for a production car at like 7.15 or something like that. And it was like on the top 10 list, lists with like Huracans and Ferraris and Porsches and all these in super extensive, expensive exotic cars. And then you just have a random Corvette in there that costs 80 grand which is pretty insane. So um, yeah, there's really, it's just because of the sound and Ooh. and how cool the car looks, it feels like you're almost in like a Batmobile or something, right? Yeah. And then, so you can drive it around in, in, in normal drive when it's in automatic, and then you can also use the paddle shifters. You can put it in the manual, or you can just tap the paddle shifters whenever you wanna be in uh, manual, and it'll allow you to do it that way. But when you use the paddle shifters, that's where you can just like, like Pop. Ridiculous. Yeah, so when you're hard on the gas and you shift gears, it always gives you those pops and it just sounds incredible. And as you can see, it scares the shit out of teens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's one thing yes. I will say about the car. So obviously fun factor is awesome. The handling's a lot of fun. The acceleration is fucking badass. Sound is awesome. Um, the only complaints I have about the car is one is the transmission. Um, sometimes when I shift, it'll take, I'm not even joking, like a second to two seconds to shift. So it's a single clutch transmission. Sometimes it makes it fun, but sometimes you just want it to shift and it doesn't. So that's my one issue with the car. And I don't think any of the, I don't even know if the ZR1 has a dual clutch transmission. I would guess it does, but I'm not positive. So that's my one issue with the car. I think the shifting should be a little bit faster. My other issue with the car is 
Um, it feels a little bit um, sloppy, I guess, the suspension. And here's what's weird. So you can see, watch how much it like, like the whole car rocks back, which is good because you want to put that weight on the rear tires to give you some acceleration. But um, so it's a little bit sloppy with the back and forth and the round, but then in the turns, it feels fine. It's really weird. It feels you know really good that? in the turns. Yeah, it feels really good in the turns. It feels pretty flat. You don't get a lot of body roll. Um, the modes, I feel like, so when you're in touring mode, I understand if it's gonna be a little soft because it's comfortable to drive and that's good. But when I put it in sport mode and in track mode, it should get a lot stiffer and I don't feel like it does. And maybe that's just the nature of the base model. Um, I know the Grand Sport, I think has like magnetic ride suspension or some crazy stuff. And I know it has better brakes and all kinds of stuff. The Z06 probably does too, but that would be my only real um, grievance with the car. My only real issue with the car would be the slow shifting and the little bit sloppy um, suspension. And that might be, again, a thing of the base model. I don't know. But other than that, this car is seriously... There's also one thing I don't badass. like about it. What's that? I don't know if you're going to mention it, but I will. Yeah. <laughs> In a convertible, that window is worthless. <laughs> it's... I can't see shit out of it and it feels really dangerous. The visibility is very poor on this yeah. because it's a convertible. Not to mention your blind spot. Yes. Your blind spot. Spot. Yeah. Blind spot. You literally go to check your blind spot and you just see nothing. You can't yeah. see it. Yeah. So that's another thing about yeah. the convertible. That's a huge factor as to why I wouldn't get it because yeah. I don't feel safe driving no. it. Plus there's no reason to get it. It Especially takes away your visibility. It, yeah. it takes away your storage and it, yeah. and you can't see anything. And it's just, yes. I don't think it's as cool either as the hard top is, you know. Plus, in a, yeah, in a convertible, the top, you yeah. just don't need it. There's no need for it. Well, if the coupe, just if you the coupe. get that piece that comes off, yeah, it's basically it is a convertible. convertible. Yeah. And, With and it's better visibility and more, more storage, storage space in the trunk. Yeah. So I'd rather have that yeah. any day. And the look is better too. You don't have that soft discoloration between the car and the top. So I agree yeah. 100%. So. Yeah, there you go, guys. I mean, that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about the car. Obviously, we it know it's about minds. us. Yeah, it, so, yeah, I didn't expect it to be as fun as it is, yes. but it really, between the comfort, all the cool features that it has, the sound, the looks, the feel, listen to that popping. I hope it comes I love, across on camera. I love Let's that sound. And this is only a base model. This like is even a supercharged. <laughs> we want to test drive the Z06 and see how that feels and sounds because I feel like we're going to absolutely love that one even more. And it's just this car amplified, you know? Um, There's one more thing that I do wish the car came with as well um, for, I know it's a base model, but I wish on the steering wheel they had access to radio the radio. Yeah. It does in a way if you have like your channels, oh God, if you have your channels, like recorded, like your six channels your or five, channels. your favorite, like yeah. you can access that, but I wish you can like go through and like tune and find a different channel. I agree. But other than that, I mean, yeah, it's we're an, blown away. It's an impressive car. Like I actually really, really like this car. And so we're considering possibly buying a Z06 for Christina's channel, or do you guys think we should wait to see what the mid-engine Corvette's gonna be? Because <laughs> that would be really cool, be all new, but I feel like the charm of the Corvette is the fact that it's front engine, rear wheel drive, and it's so freaking crazy. I mean, it was a little bit uh, wet yesterday, and I was driving her little brother around, and I would downshift and hammer it, and it would just fishtail all over the place, and I feel like that's the kind of the fun of the car, because it's just so damn fun to drive. So I don't know if the mid engine but Corvette's gonna have that. we did see on YouTube some people doing like reviews of what it could look like, Yeah. and the look was very clean. It looks like it looked, a Ferrari, but like an American-made yeah, Ferrari. Yeah, it looked like I don't know. It looks pretty Very, sick. Very, like, the Corvette got a Botox <laughs> makeover. I mean, it was amazing. So if it looks like that, I don't know. Yeah, it could but be But really cool. we still have to test drive the Z06 and see how that compares to this. Yeah. All right, so there you go, guys. That's my uh, review and walk around of the 2019 Chevy Corvette Stingray. I know I'm a little late to the game, but I thought I had some interesting things to share and our thoughts and opinions on the car. So um, let me know what you guys think of the car in the uh, description below. Let me know if you think Christina should get a Z06 or she should wait for the mid-engine Corvette. And let me know if you guys enjoy uh, these reviews and walk-arounds and let me know if you want to see more of them on the channel. If you enjoy what we're doing here, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you always get notified when we upload a video. Give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one. Peace guys.